Oak Park Theatre Company presents episode 3 of Death at the Door. Ronnie! What's up? Let's, let's take the dirt path. I don't know, man. It's pretty dark down here. I prefer not to break my neck. It'll take us by the cemetery. And with this storm, I can really get some good pictures. It'll only take a few minutes. All right, fine. But if it starts to rain, we leave. I don't want to get soaked. Same. Mom, I'm home. Shar and Tara are here with me. Mom? Note on the table, Sunny. Sunny, got called to the hospital because of the storm. Left three dollars for pizza. Please don't make a mess. Hell yeah. Guys, I'm on a fast right now. No carbs, no sugar, no dairy. You don't need to fast. You are gorgeous. I mean it. Very true. Seriously, you guys are my spirit animal. Aww. Aww. Ooh, idea. We're going to phone up Pollyanna's for Greek salads, sauteed eggplant, and garlic cheese toast. For those who aren't fasting. I'll forgive the toast if I can have a bite. Deal. Jeez, that sounds bad. Would a sleepover be a possibility? I don't want to walk home in the rain. It's not a possibility. It's going to happen. I have the perfect movie choice for a stormy night like this. What would you say to a binge thon filled with vampires, werewolves, and hot shirtless guys? Twilight movie marathon! You read my mind. Do you know that the material used in gravestones used to mean something? Gravestones in North America are typically made up of granite, marble, limestone, and some other materials. But it used to be seen that wealthy families would only use marble and granite, while poor families would use cheaper materials such as sandstone or even just wood. Military graves would use marble, granite, or even bronze. Well, color me stunned that you don't have a girlfriend. Hardy har, like you do. I have a few prospects. <laughs> sure you do. That could be our cue. I'll grab a couple more shots and we can head out. You know that each bolt of lightning is about 300 million volts? That is a lot of power. Yep. It kind of makes you wonder, with that much juice, there could really do something. Like what? Not sure. But I think there was a Doctor Who episode that had something to do with electricity, screwing up the space and time. I suppose 300 million volts could do something like that. You mean something like weakening the dimensions? Mm, yeah, or just the bonds between them. You know that the Incan god of storms was named Ilapa? He was a god of war and would carry a sling and a mace. The thunder was the sound of its bullets tearing through the air, and the lightning was the sparks when it made contact with something. The sling's not too impressive. They only do like 1d4 on Dungeons and Dragons. I'm sure an Incan god would have a magical sling that would pack a harder punch. Hey, is that someone over there? Looks like he's coming this way. We should probably leave. Uh, Ronnie? Yeah? In the light, it looked like that guy was like... Not right. What does that mean? Dude! What? Look, there, by that gravestone. The ground. It looks like something's moving under the grass. Holy crap! What the hell? Dude, it's an arm. There's an arm coming out of the ground. Look, over there, too. There's another one. We need to get out of here. Milo, look out! Ronnie, it's got my leg! There's an undead zombie grabbing my leg. That's redundant, don't you think? What? Well, zombies are dead, so saying they're undead is kind of a waste of time. You are a waste of time! Do something! Right, sorry. The next thing you're gonna tell me is we should describe them as being life force challenged. Get this thing off my leg. There. My size 11 and a half took care of that. Thanks. Now let's get out of here. You know, Milo, did you notice something? You mean more than just dozens of life force challenged walking about? Yeah, I mean that... They're coming towards us, but they really aren't that fast, are they? Now that you mention it, they're not running towards us at all. Maybe because they can't. Look at them. They're quite broken down. You suppose they don't have the musculature to chase after us? Well, you stomp that one and grab them pretty easily. Yeah, I'm gonna go test something out. We 
really should be going. We've both seen enough Walking Dead to know what happens when people tempt fate during a zombie attack. That wasn't too hard. Jeez, you just weld on it with your backpack? Yeah, and it broke apart pretty easily. I'll be damned. Yet another example of how the Hollywood entertainment machine has misled people. The zombie apocalypse might not be as big of a deal as they make it out to be. How many do you think there are? I'd think there are about a dozen or so making their way towards us. But think about it. We live in a pretty small town. There are probably about 250 graves or so. Your point? Do the math. There are going to be a percentage of those graves that have cremated remains. At most, we are talking about 100, 150 zombies. That's still quite a few. But some might not be able to dig themselves out because they are too far gone. So we're maybe looking about a 100 or so, give or take. That's enough for me. Look, they're shambling their way to town. Call the RCMP and give them a heads up. Crud, I can't dial out. That's weird. I know the town doesn't have the best cell service, but I can always call out. I wonder if the storm is causing some sort of interference. It's possible. You know what this means. We need to head back to town and warn whoever we can. And while we're heading there, we bash as many as we can. I got your back, partner. Let's find some baseball bat-sized branches and send the life force challenge back to the ground from whence they came. Time to be heroes. Death at the Door, written by Jim Alexander, with Sonny Gillies as Milo, Evan Hill as Ronnie, Molly Lysak as Sonny, Sadaf Mohammed as Char, and Nelia Nevis as Tara. Produced and directed by Kara Tyson, with Miss Jones, Ian Neville, Dylan Jones, and Jack Dylan as tech team. Edited by Kara Tyson and Dylan Jones. Thank you for listening to Episode 3 of Death at the Door, presented by Oak Park Theatre Company.